My name is Matt, welcome back to the shop and today we're going to go a bit more down the rabbit hole clutches and so on. So I received a comment on the uh, why do we, you know, the wet clutch and is it counterintuitive and what are the benefits of using a wet clutch and so on. And uh, I got this comment, this comment is awesome. So it's from a guy called Robo uh, Robo Mika Gaming and he said, wet clutches don't lock up from more force, a wet clutch is much smoother than a dry clutch. They work like a suction cup on glass. When a suction cup is dry, it doesn't stick. Lick it and then it sticks. I've experimented with oil viscosities on wet clutches. The thicker you go on the oil, the harder it is to disengage the clutch. The thicker oil bridges a larger gap between the plates, causing them to stay stuck together with less spring pressure. A simple experiment to illustrate how a wet clutch works. Take two flat planes of glass, panes of glass, push them together, nothing. Uh, get them wet and put them together. Now they're stuck and you can hardly pull them apart. That's how a wet clutch works. No, it's not. <laughs> oh, Jesus. Right, so... Um, I... How, his example, how does that work? Well, when you get a sticky thing and stick it to a, what is it? You're trying to use Van der Waals force and you're trying to evacuate all the air by pushing it together and the outside air pressure versus that volume that's now increased because it's trying to suck away creates a vacuum and that pressure differential is what makes them cups stick together. Why does licking it help? It helps seal that if your rubber sucker isn't perfect or the flat surface has deviations. Rubber suckers work a lot better on glass because the glass is a lot harder which means it usually has less scratches in it which means the surface is a lot flatter and so on and so on. You try and get a suction cup and stick it to something with fur on it like your fucking cat and it ain't gonna fucking work no matter how much you lick it or put oil on it or whatever. Now, due to suction between clutch, clutch plates because of shear stress, because of oil, yes, when you pull it apart by hand, it is harder to pull apart. The torque that we are talking about with bikes and springs it will easily overcome that, no problem. Now, there is, um, what do you call it, viscosity drag in clutches. That's why uh, one of the things that dry clutches don't suffer from and so on and so forth, but we'll go down that rabbit hole in a different video. Um, what I want to talk to you about is a calculation of how much um, torque, basically, that your clutch can handle before it should slip. So we have um, what we call torque um, capability, and the equation for this is, and let me see if I can remember this, <laughs> it is Z mu FA uh, RM. Right, so if you have these, if you know these figures, then away you can go. You can actually work out the top capability of that clutch. So what do all these mean? So Z here is the number of clutch plate surface, uh, surfaces. So each disc, let me get that clutch out and edit this bit out. So this clutch disc here, this has two surfaces um, as you clamp the whole thing together. <coughs> so that's number of surfaces. Then you have mu here, which is um, the coefficient of friction. And then you have Fa. In a sense, your Fa is force applied, and this is our, what we would call in this situation our normal force, but basically this is the pressure or the force, it's actually a force, it is a force, but let's just say that's the pressure that your springs apply, and your RM, RM comes from the, um, oh, what's it called, uh, radius of gyration, that's the one, um, it, which is all to do with momentum and stuff like that. So basically this is the size or dimensions, mentions, of your clutch, your actual clutch plates. So with all these, we can actually fill in all the numbers of how much torque this can take. And the units are in Newton meters, if you're doing this, so you'd have to convert everything over and all the rest of it. So if we look at um, the SV, so I've got some EBC discs here. You get a new clutch for the SV. And there's all these discs here. And there is one, two, three, four, five, ten. It's ten. Now, there is a smaller one versus these other ones. You can see that the radius, the um, 
thickness of these are different. There is a smaller one. We'll get to why and stuff in the SV video. Um, but let's just ignore that. Just we're trying to get you know roundabout numbers. So we've got um, ten discs. So that's twenty surfaces. Uh, the coefficient of friction for these discs. Now I want to quickly talk about discs because a lot of people won't know these things. Um, so you can see these here. Now where you can see that colour. These are the the blackish ones. And a lot of clutches are rubber impregnated cork or cork, no, yeah, cork impregnated rubber. Um, but a lot of them are paper elements. This stuff is not what you think it is. This isn't brake disc material. Um, a lot of it's paper, paper fibres, cellulose, stuff like that. Now you can get uh, Kevlar ones, Kevlar ones, I'll put some pictures up now. Kevlar ones, it's basically what's almost impregnated it, and you can get coatings as well. There's Kevlar ones, they're usually green. Um, you can get carbon ones, carbon, carbon ones. Bloody hell. Any road, so you can get carbon, carbon ones, you can get them impregnated or with all sorts. And there's loads of different variations in between. The only reason why I'd want to change materials is some of them are a bit longer lasting and stuff like that, but it's the coefficient of friction that is actually different. But for standard discs, uh, clutch plates like them, it is actually it's 0 0.03, which is really low. It can be between 0, um, at 0 0.05 to 0 0.03, somewhere in between there. Um, uh, rubber on tarmac is one, so you can see how far away this is. This is actually quite, uh, it's a real low coefficient of friction. This number is that included with oil added because this is a wet clutch. So them two surfaces, uh, no, the fibre surface rubbing on steel with oil in between, the coefficient of friction is a bit, well, it's, yes, it's wet, so it's, a, it's about 0 0.03. That's an approximation. This equation is actually, uh, you know, it's just a, it's a to get the ball roll, rolling, it is um, the resolution or the accuracy of this is not perfect um, because you've got to take into consideration a few more things. And to be quite honest, unless you're designing the clutch, you don't really need to know this ballpark figure. And you always have numbers that are over what the torque of the engine can produce because obviously you don't want it close to it because you want it slipping. Uh, the force, so the force of your springs, you can actually find this out what this is in your manual. You either either you either work it out or whatever. Um, so for the SV, we're going to use the SV, it's about 200 newtons of force per millimetre, that's the, the spring rate. Now there are six springs, so you're going to times that by six, which will give you 1200 newtons. It's about 120 kilos of force in Earth's gravity, well actually a bit uh, more than that, but about 120 kilos. That's about what that is. Um, and then we've got our RM. So our radius, what you do is, the best way to work this out, there's a few ways you can go around about working this out. But what we want to do is we want to take the outside diameter, the inside diameter, so the outside diameter there we call R2, the inside diameter there we call R1. And the way you work this out basically is R2 plus R1 over 2. So that's how you work down. So if we look at our clutch discs, get a ruler out. Like I say, we'll go not that skinny one, we'll go for the bigger one. And you're looking at the friction material, that's what you want to point at. We've got uh, 15 centimetres uh, OD, so R2 is 15. So that's 15, and it's not squared. That oh, looks like it's squared, it shouldn't be. Plus, uh, what's that? 13, 13, now we have to put this in metres and divide it by 2, so that would be 0 point and 0 point, there we go, 13, that's 28 minus, uh, divided by 2, 28 divided by 2 is 14, so our number here is 14. So if we punch in all the numbers from all of that, get me calculator out. And these are all multiplications. It doesn't really matter which order you put this in. Uh, where are we? Bloody hell, can I find a fucking calculator? Calculator, there we go. So we've got 20, 20 plates, 20 surfaces, not 20 plates, 10 plates, two sides to, uh, two sides to each plate. Uh, times 0 0.03. 
times 1200 newtons times uh, what we're we doing 14 and that's 0 0.14 right that's meters because we're doing newton meters uh, times 0 0.14 equals a hundred so our TC for the uh, SV is a hundred newton meters that's basically where we are with that now like I say these numbers the coefficient of friction could be higher if the coefficient of friction is higher let's just say it's 0.5 to 0 0.05 so this is 0 0.03 0 0.05 let's quickly do that 20 what's it 20 times 0 0.05 times 1200 times 0 0.14 equals 168 so you can see the difference that your friction material how much this coefficient of friction when it changes because we've got 20 plates or 20 surfaces 10 plates changing your coefficient of friction makes a massive difference now the sv specs are that it produces 96 newton meters <coughs> so i imagine the clutch might be 0 .0, 0 0.04 or something there between there but with this basic equation you can work out pretty much um the, the torque capability of your clutch so this also brings up um a talking point in the sense if your clutch is slipping, right, you've just gone and got your GSX-R1000 or your R1 or your, I don't know, dick in your balls or something, and your clutch is slipping, there are really only two things that can change this. It is the coefficient of friction here, and it is the force there. Not how wet it is, not how much suction you have from your oil or any of that rubbish. So with these two things... Um, that can affect the operation of your clutch. We're not changing the number of plates and we're not changing the size of your clutch whatsoever. So it's like I say, it's either your viscosity, um, the coefficient of friction, which is generally down to the viscosity of your oil, unless your discs are glazed, maybe they're, you know, they're a bit slippier, stuff like that, if the coefficient of friction drops. Um, generally, people, uh, well, people are going to ask what happens if you have older oil well, generally what happens is is with older oil the older oil the older your oil gets the more um water down it is by gas blow by and stuff which generally reduces the super slippy nature of your oil it basically thins it out um, which will mean that your coefficient of friction actually goes up so generally older older oil really isn't damaging you that much um, as the oil starts to break down as the molecules start to break down all the rest of it they actually lose some of their lubricity which for bearings and stuff is a bad thing, it means increased wear, but for your clutch it actually means that you're actually going to have uh, more torque capability. Uh, the other thing it could be is obviously your springs, so if your springs are shit in the bed, they've been heat cycled too many times, they've got too hot, something weird, or maybe, you know, something like that. The third thing is that something's fucked in your clutch. So just because you've got a slippy clutch, if you haven't changed your oil, nothing else has changed, don't automatically think, well, it's not the oil, I put new oil in it, and it's the same oil I had before, before it started slipping. Well, it's got to be the springs. There could actually be something wrong with your clutch. <laughs> you know what I mean? Maybe, I don't know, maybe your clutch plates or something are absolutely fucking knackered. If your clutch plates glaze over and all this and get a shiny surface, that means that they are going to... Um, your coefficient of friction is going to drop out and be even lower, and you can see what happens when your coefficient of friction goes down. So that's your coefficient of friction going down, and that's it going up. The uh, super, the, the more super slippy your clutch becomes, the less torque that it can actually um, handle for the that its torque capability drops out simply because your force basically remains the same. As your clutch wears out, your springs then will become close and close to their free length. Nah, the, them springs are under quite a lot of compression by the time you get round to it. So they're basically they're a, they've allowed for that uh, wear of your clutch unless your clutch is completely fucking worn out something stupid like that but what are the things you can do you can go in there you can you can scuff up you literally get some sandpaper just a little light scuff up nothing crazy maybe like 400 grit or something like that, maybe 280 something like that just give them a little scuff up when you clean them when you put them back in there's not a problem with doing that if you're not going to replace them don't be too heavy-handed because like i say these 
the friction material on your clutches aren't absolutely crazy. Um, people are going to, I know the, the comments that are already coming, well why don't we make friction pads, uh, friction material that has a lot higher coefficient of friction. Um, for the simple fact is usually when something is more robust and more rigid um, and harder wearing it means it's going to wear out your clutch discs instead of your friction material and the friction material is the bearing surface in that scenario. That's the thing that's really meant to wear out. The steel plates and all the rest of it should hopefully usually survive a lot longer as in the changing intervals are a lot bigger. So if you use a, you know, it's just like brake pads basically. If you use a harder material for your brake pads, a um, more wear resistant material, it usually then, you know, the other thing that it's bearing down on usually takes the brunt of that and discs are more expensive than pads. So, um, yeah, you know, if your clutch is slipping and you haven't increased your power that you're trying to put through the bike, you haven't done anything like that, uh, a big part of call is the oil, if you've changed your oil, or if the manufacturers have changed the oil slightly, they've done a hoodwink and it's a fucking new formula, you know, generally they don't tend to do that, generally they stick where they are. Um, but always, always expect or remember that your clutch could be fucked in some way as well, it's not just... You know, it's not just these things are the reason why your clutch is slipping. It can also be how your entire clutch is set up. Um, you know, you've got um, your, your clutch set up is wrong. So maybe in your free plane, your cable, maybe your hydraulic system's been a bit of a dickhead. It's a bit rarer for hydraulic systems and all that. If they go spongy, it usually means that the, you can't disengage the clutch, not engage the clutch. But you can see from these numbers, it gives you an approximation of pretty much whereabouts you're sitting and all the rest of it. Trying to get coefficient of friction numbers from manufacturers is a pain. Okay, now you know, bloody cable tie. Trying to get <laughs> coefficient of friction numbers from uh, uh, manufacturers is a bit of a... I'm going to try and we'll see what we'll do. We'll have a look at some of the numbers and so on. Uh, we'll talk a bit more about clutches themselves and the actual clutch material. We'll actually get some carbon ones and we'll get some Kevlar ones. And you can also get sintered bronze ones, which are usually used for, which are in Ducatis and stuff, um, or the older Ducatis, and they're um, usually used for uh, dry clutches. Hope that makes sense, and I'll see you in a bit.